The first half of the 19th century brought brilliant discoveries. In 1827, the German Jörg Simon Ohm discovered the relationship between voltage and current in a conductor. Then, Britain's Michael Faraday discovered the law of electrical induction. The second half of the century produced the lamp, the dynamo, the motor, the transformer, the meter and the turbine in quick succession. With the invention of the dynamo credited to both Agnos Jedlik and Werner von Siemens, the father of the Siemens brand, electrical energy could now be generated en masse. The first application was lighting. When this new product, electrical energy, started to be sold, an important question was raised. How much should it cost? Also, or furthermore, how could it best be measured? The earliest meter was Samuel Gardner's lamp hour meter, patented in 1872. It measured the time during which energy was supplied to the load, as all the lamps connected to this meter were controlled by one switch, but there were limitations. Thomas Edison introduced the first electrical distribution systems for lighting using direct current. He held that electricity must be sold just like gas, also used extensively for lighting at that time. His electric meter, patented in 1881, relied on the electrochemical effect of current. A piece of copper was placed into an electrolytic cell at the beginning of the billing period. The current caused a small deposit of copper and the difference in weight represented the amount of electricity used. This meter was calibrated to read in cubic meters of gas, simplifying billing. Although used until the late 1800s, meter reading was difficult to impossible, leading to the later addition of a counting mechanism to aid meter reading. There were other electrolytic meters, like the German Siemens Schuckert hydrogen meter and the Schottengen Jena mercury meter. Another way to create a reliable meter was to create some motion in proportion to the energy being consumed, such as an oscillation, which could then drive a counter. The principle was first described by two Americans, William Edward Ayrton and John Perry in 1881. In 1884, without knowing of their invention, the German Hermann Aron also constructed a pendulum meter. These coincidences were indicative of the rate of development of the industry. These meters were expensive, however, requiring two clocks, and were gradually replaced by an even newer, more exciting technology. But more of that next time. We will be looking back to technology that would shape the next hundred years of industrial development.